Good morning, San Bonani. This is an absolutely amazing episode of Elevate. I can already tell. But today I'm hanging out with the amazing, the incredible uh, international Ntogo Zimbabwe. Uh, she's joining me in Amsanja Ikseni to delve into her life, find out a bit more about her and her recent album, Lavish Worship, which is doing absolutely amazing, not just here in Zanzi, but across Africa and across the world. So help me welcome to Gaga CFM to elevate uh, Miss Ntogo Zimbabwe. Good morning. Hey, good morning, morning. I'm excited to be here today. I think the first, the first thing for me, I think we've been talking about this even, even off air, uh, is, is Magabong, yeah. the 40 minute <laughs> video that, that went up on YouTube. By the way, thank you for not cutting it, because <laughs> that was my biggest fear. I was there yeah. when it was recorded, so my, my biggest fear was like, how are they going to figure out which part to take out? <laughs> so I was like, I'm so thankful that yeah. no part was taken out. Tell us about the video. Only a couple of weeks, it reached over a million views. Yeah. Tell us about that. Oh, man. It was absolutely mind-blowing. I think anyone who was present at the Durban um, album launch in March mm. can attest to it. It was just absolutely amazing. And what we experienced that day was just out of this world. Mm. I think... The perfect way to put it is that heaven just decided to invade earth, you know, yeah. and um, we were just engulfed by the presence of God and his goodness. And it was absolutely amazing to be in that atmosphere and in that room. And we're just truly really grateful that we were able to capture that moment. Mm. Um, and yeah, man. And I remember while we were editing and, and going through it, we went through it and we we're like, there's no way we can <laughs> cut this. <laughs> That's true. Even if we try, there is absolutely no way we can be able to cut this. It would, we would be doing injustice. the people, yeah, and yeah. injustice, absolutely. And we we're like, no, this has to be experienced by everybody, you know, as much as it won't reach. Um, the moment where mm. we experienced it live. Yo. But, you know, people have to, this is not for us. It yeah. wasn't about us, but it was about, you know, just really just making sure that um, everybody who gets an opportunity to watch the video gets to experience what, just a glimpse mm. of what we experienced that night. So it was so important that we, it, it, it didn't, it wasn't even a debate, yeah. you know, um, between my, my producers and I would see, are we keeping the whole thing or are we cutting it? Everybody was just, it was a unanimous decision. Mm. Say, nope, there's no way we can so cut this. Need. We have to leave it as it is. As much as it's 40 minutes long, probably the longest song in history, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we have to keep it as it is because it just wouldn't make sense to cut it, you know. And we're truly grateful, you know, out of... I mean, in, less, in about three weeks, we were able to reach a million views, which is absolutely unheard of and incredible. Mm. And it, the numbers just keep increasing every single week and it truly is just amazing. And um, I guess it's, it's a testament, Yoguti, really, really, that was just a God moment, you mm. know. As much as God used us, we cannot take credit for that, you know. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, it was God making sure that he... He did something that we'd never experienced before, and, and he should get the glory for that. Yeah. yeah. You've intentionally made certain steps from your career, for your career, rather, yeah. to invade and explore other territories of Africa. And that now resulted in you featuring on this particular song, Pastor Nathaniel Bassey. Yeah. When he came through, and I think for me and a lot of people, it was such an unexpected moment. Yeah, yeah. How did that take you? Oh man, that was that was ugh, that was mind blowing. <laughs> and the thing that people who have watched the video don't realize is that um, there was okay. So there was we we did our version, and there was a couple of songs after that mm. before Pastor Nat came on. We even did a song together yeah. before he actually even started playing Umaga Bongwe. So for me, that just proves Uti. That was just holy spirit inspired yeah. that was just god himself because that was the first time he heard magabong where he had never heard the song before yeah. so kulo 20 odd minutes of us singing magabong with that was the first time of him hearing it and then there were other songs that were sung afterwards mm, mm, mm. before he came on and then suddenly he went back to magabong and it just shows what he 
according to human knowledge, that mm. is impossible, no matter how much of a musical genius you are. There's no way that you'd remember a song that was sung probably like 30 odd minutes ago, yeah. you know, and be able to play it instinctively and yeah. perfectly. That can only be without God. Any without, and without any rehearsal, <laughs> it, that can only be God. That can only be the Holy Spirit inspired. And, and, you know, when he went back there, it was just like, oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> just, I'm done. I saw you I sobbing. was done. I was, <laughs> I was finished. I was totally done. And um, the, the beautiful thing about Pastor Nats is that his heart is just as incredible as the anointing upon his life. It's just amazing. I remember on the night, Ngazangashuti. Um, yeah. you know, yeah. he, he is as Mzalwane as they come, you know, just such an incredible ambassador of the kingdom of God, highly anointed, mm. just, and also the musicianship of, upon his life is just incredible, you know, mm. he's not just hiding behind the anointing, but the level of um, creativity, yeah. professionalism, um, you know, um, the gifting on his life and his musicianship is just as, as, as incredible as the anointing on his life as well so he works on the gift that god has absolutely given. continuously mm. and you even hear it in his play you know i rem i remember one of the comments said um he's pretty sure that pastor nat has the gig for the second coming you know because <laughs> <laughs> the scripture says <laughs> the scripture says i mean the no i can i can give it to him you know? i could give it to him <laughs> the trumpet <laughs> shall sound you know um how scripture puts it when when he appears the trumpet the trumpet shall sound no, so I, I would i would like, i wouldn't be no, faced pastor nat has the gig for the second coming hands down no competition <laughs> no he does that trumpet very well incredible Yo. it 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 just pierces the heart man and and it's such a blessing to be connected to him he's a friend he's a brother to us and so encouraging as well you know mm. um it's not just something that happened on stage but even behind the scenes he is he is a wonderful uh, man of god who always just speaks over our lives and encourages us us and um, you know we we stay in contact we talk all the time and it truly is a blessing to be connected um, to him you mm. know? so you uh, have this brand new album now Magabong is still taking people <laughs> by storm <laughs> yeah you, you you now as as I said earlier on have opened a lot of doors for yourself I saw a video of you are performing now in, in stadiums all over, <laughs> all over Africa what does that do now to your sound has that kept your sound as it was? Is it evolving? And what would you like to say to certain people who'd say, I get it, and it was way too long. In the shadow of your wings. Yeah. You want that. What would you say to those people looking at you and, and perhaps not grabbing the move that God is doing with your life? Yeah. Um, man. Oh, well, first of all, I've never been dogs with too long. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not where we are. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, when you've, you've explored everything, you've done it all. I remember when I first met with Upega um, Mteto and Usabu Sacha when we were recording uh, bass and drums for, for the songs. I just poured out my heart to them. We would see, um, I've done the dramatic things. I've done the big... Um, Introductions mm. with the band and the and the you know uh, s synth sounds like and time to migrate. and you know that, that you know I've done all one. of that you yeah. know um I've I've you know and 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 not that I'm saying that I'm pushing putting down a notch on the musicality of it all it's still as musical as as possible you know um but I like I've reached the point where I'm like I just want to worship. Mm. You know, that's my heart. That's who I am. I just wanted to create a worship album that would be able to usher people into God's presence and, you know, just to create an atmosphere, you know, whether it's your private prayer closet time mm. or it's your um, or you're just having a bad day and you just need to um, and you just need to plug in, you mm. know, to the presence of God. And that's what I told them. I was like, I've done it all. I've got nothing to prove now. Mm. You know, I just want to worship and that's exactly what the album is all about i think that's why we call it lavish worship you know it's it's a it's a lavish gesture of devotion and that's where it comes from you know um the bible speaks about the the woman who had an alabaster box and yeah. she she 
poured out the most expensive oil, mm. you know, at the feet of Jesus from the top of his head um, in worship, in adoration unto him. Um, and uh, the Passion Translation says that it's a lavish gesture of devotion. Mm. And that's exactly what the album is. It's a lavish gesture of devotion unto our God. We've experienced it all. We've gone through it all these past three years. We've experienced loss yeah. um, in different forms, in different aspects of our lives, not just losing people. Some people lost businesses. Some people lost their jobs yeah. you know we've gone through it all but this is like a, a, a statement of Uguti you know we've experienced it all we've gone through it all but we still choose to worship this mm. true and living God you know we've gone through loss we've gone through pain we've gone through heartache but the presence of the Lord is where we find liberty the presence of God is where we find joy the presence of God is where we find peace mm. you know which surpasses all understanding and that is exactly what the album is about is making sure that people go back to the gist of it all and that is worship mm. yeah now on the 12th of august uh, just a couple of weeks ago you won an award in the basadi music awards yeah. tell us about you and awards do you do it for the awards uh, or do you appreciate <laughs> the awards i know a lot of people are like i ah, know they come they come if not <laughs> I think and I'm one of those. On, and some are on the other end of the spectrum. I think I'm one of those. I'm, th I'm, one, I'm on the side. If they come, that's great. But um, that's not um, what drives and pushes uh, me to do what I do. I mean, it, it truly is a blessing to be recognized. And um, I'm not I'm awards or anything. It, it, it is a blessing, you know, to be given a pat on the back. And we'll see, you know, you're doing a great job. Yeah. Um, so I, I didn't expect to win. Because um, I remember when they, when the list was sent, I was like, oh, yay, great. <laughs> I didn't even tell people to vote. Because <laughs> I, I, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't say anything. Which is, I think for me, was just even more special about getting it was the fact that people even though i didn't tell people to vote but they still decided mm. you know would see they would vote for me either way and that for me was just such mm. a blessing you know um you know being recognized and getting a pat on the back by the people who i make the music for you know the people who i i service the most they are the one who, ones who recognize the woodsy no this is the one this is yeah. it you know and i'm truly grateful and it, it really is an honor um but the awards are not why we do uh, what i why i do, what I I do. Be <laughs> mm. come uh, on down <laughs> let me stop <laughs> so, so you i think it was many years ago how does one break through in their own a lot of people start off with groups they start off in whenever they're doing music yeah. How does one get to that point of breakthrough where they say, now this is it, this is, this is, this is why I'm doing this. Yeah. Now I've hit, I've, perhaps I've plateaued in a particular sense. Yeah. How does one get there? There's a, there's a lot of people, we even get music here every week, people sending us stuff like, I want to make it in, in mm. the music industry. What does it take for a gospel musician to make it? Sure. Hey, it takes a lot. <laughs> it truly does take a lot. And, um, you know, coming from a group where everything was done for you, yeah. you just literally just arrived and everything was just set. Um, and you didn't even have to bring a microphone, you know. Didn't you didn't even have to look at quotations. Bruh, you didn't even have to find something to wear. <laughs> <laughs> so it was literally just everything being done for you. And moving from that into having to do everything by yourself, from literally from getting a pair of shoes, you mm. know, um, and, and booking artists, booking band, booking production team, sound, lighting, catering, because people love to eat and people must eat. Yes, yes sir. Oh, <laughs> you know, people work better when <laughs> in, in full stomachs, just That's so true. you know. That's true. <laughs> so, you know, having to put all of that together, um, it's just been a lot. That mm. much I can tell you, and um, it's it, sometimes it feels like it's easy to to just yes in. Let me leave this. And yeah, this is taking too much out of me. Um, but you know, you have to have a certain sense of resilience um, and persistence, yeah, and perseverance, you know, in order for you to make it. But for me, I would say the first and the most important thing is make sure that you heard correctly from God. Yes. It is so vital mm. because the thing about 
what God says is like Eliti, his word does not return to him void, yeah. but it accomplishes that which he sent it out for. So if you make sure that you heard correctly, it would say this is the path for you. Then that means no matter what storms, mm. no matter what you may face, mm. at the end of the day, what God said will stand. That word will carry you. That word will carry you. So it is so important that first and foremost, before you even decide to um, step into the gospel music industry, make sure that you heard from God first. Before the people saying, oh, you've got such an incredible talent, um, you know, I think you, maybe you should think about considering... Your voice is Your nice. voice is amazing, yeah. you know. Consider being... Make sure the, the most important voice is the voice from God. Mm. Make sure you heard from Him clearly. Because if you've heard from Him clearly then everything else, no matter no matter the attacks, no matter the no's that you get, yeah. um, at the end of the day, he will make sure that his word um, stands and mm. his word um, comes to pass. So that would be the first thing. Yeah. And then it will also require, like, like I said earlier, perseverance, persistence, and um, you know, just pushing through and resilience. Mm. You know, um, because there will definitely be no's, there will be, definitely be dis disappointments, um, and pushing through, and also make sure that you've got a great team and support system around you. Yeah. Um, Like-minded people. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it's been said, Wootsie, you are only as good as your team. And I'm so grateful to have an incredible team behind me. Um, and that has taken years um, as well because, I mean, we've been working together for some of these, with some of these people for um, probably over 15 years, mm. you know, and it's such a blessing to have like-minded people, people who are like, okay, well, sometimes my dreams are pretty crazy. And they're like, <laughs> and then they look at me and give me the eye and they're like, okay, fine, okay. <laughs> they're like, okay, we'll, okay, make, it we'll, we'll make it work. <laughs> You know, so so make sure that you you find yourself a really strong team um, that will also help you to accomplish what you need to. Yeah. So being in the music industry for me is <clears> one <throat> thing, but being in the kingdom is another. Now yeah, that means you have some setbacks, some yeah. some setups, and some stumbling blocks that a person who might be doing probably Afro pop won't face. Yeah, what's the biggest thing that you'd say was a challenge that you faced by doing this kind of music? And perhaps it might have it might have been into your roots and the devil is like, stop this. <laughs> yeah. Um I think one of the biggest challenges um we've 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 had to face was finances. Mm. Because it is pretty expensive mm. um to do what we do. Um Sengi Kumela Minage as in Dogos on Bambu. Yeah. Um, the music that I do, the level of production um, that I choose um, to, to, to go, you know, the route that I've picked in terms of production, in terms of music, in terms of style, yeah. um, in terms of brand. Um, so it gets pretty expensive, like ridiculously expensive. And um, I remember after we recorded, people still don't believe this, but in 2015, we recorded Spirit and Life, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we recorded in February. Um, leading up to it, oh my word, oh, that was insane. That was probably the most difficult time we've Are you ever, serious? I promise you. Probably that's why it was so good. We had zilch, like literally we had no money. I remember in preparation for rehearsals, because people must eat, you know, yeah. and I'm a firm believer in people eating. So what I would do, I couldn't even afford to book a caterer or even buy um, uh, takeaways, mm. you know, to, to feed my people. Um, and do you know, I would wake up early in the morning on day of rehearsal wow. to cook for my band and my singers, cook for rehearsal. and. Um, and I make sure that I cook extra so that at least um, when I come home from, from, from work, at least it's the dinner, it's the dinner for yeah. the day. So wake up early, cook. And then pack is each as I'm in the car, Tati, I'm a bored way, and and pack them in the car and then go to rehearsal. And still have to sing. And still have to yes, and still have to be productive and creative and create the music. Yeah. 
lunch time comes and uh, because at least the place that we were at could allow us with this food to mess with and then basically a power food to yes and they loved it and my plate that one me and um you know everybody would eat um i don't know how god did it but sometimes but God somehow would make it work. I mean, he did feed 5,000 with just two fish and, you know, and five loaves of bread. But he literally did that um, during our rehearsal phase. And then comes the show. We have no money. We have to play, pay production team. <sighs> it was a lot. And I remember mm. even afterwards, it took us like about three years to recover from that. Yeah because we were in debt yeah we were in debt we almost lost our house um <laughs> <laughs> so you know it was, like we went through the most there was even a phase where we didn't have a car for two years missing mm. in our motto for two years um we would literally rent here and hire there depending when money comes in yeah but and it was insane mm. and you know god just brought us even more closer together as a family you know we went through the most but i promise you we are the, as tight as ever Dad, <laughs> you can't go through that with me and must must spoke to you you, you, yeah, 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 you, you can't. know woman what he you know, just to take a scene, you know, patch, patch here and there. Mm. But, you know, God was faithful. And I think things really started to, you know, we could literally start to breathe, I think, in like 2019. Mm. So can you imagine from 2015 going through the most up until 2019? They were like, you God just you know, started <laughs> opening international doors. You started traveling. And it was just literally just boom. You know, and even past the net, about me was through Jehovah is your name. Mm. And Jehovah is your and name was has... recorded in twenty in the twenty fifteen yeah. album where we were drowning <laughs> <laughs> financially. Imagine if you had you had you had decided to say like ah I you Exactly. Mm. Exactly. And that you one know. has about I think what last I checked had about thirty thirty seven million views. Now. Exactly. So you know so the investment at that time it, it felt it looked like some people we even lost some people along the way you know who were like we were being wasteful and whatnot but the thing is we prioritized the product because we knew would see if we focus on the product and making sure that the product is world-class level there the is no respond. way that the world would be quiet mm. you know at some point it's going to be recognized exactly and and that that was our greatest challenge was financially um you know standing by our dreams because also just to encourage someone would say sometimes people sometimes you won't get the sponsors mm. you know and one of the quotes that really awakened us to put in as much as we talk yeah. um was someone said to to us who would say only a fool wouldn't invest in him, in himself mm. and that for us was an eye-opener would say i cannot expect someone else to put in imali into Without something me now myself i'm not willing to lay down my life for you know and and that for us was 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 incredibly changing because from then onwards we were like product 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 mm. and it has to be world-class level yeah. mm. so going through that crushing anytime and anyone when, whenever they say i'm anointed <laughs> you literally call all these trials and tribulations yeah to come. What would you say to a couple, perhaps a young couple persevering in ministry, perhaps yeah. in, 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 in music, they are going through that crushing, they yeah. are losing things left, right and centre, they are probably being evicted. Mm. What would you say to them as a word of encouragement? Man, I think... Because people, I think when yeah. they see you and they don't, they don't, they don't <laughs> see that, they don't imagine that, they're like, ah, these people went from joy house. Just to this, from this to that. It's ah. always just been cushions. Hey, hey, Miss Miss Lalex Simendo, but it pretty, it got pretty rough. And I think for us, um, being in a local church mm. and having a spiritual father really, really helped That's us a lot. Helped us a lot. Umfundi yeah. Sunzo was with us every step of the way, and he was like, "Guys, don't panic. God's got you. You know." Um, you know relax and sometimes he wouldn't physically tell us face to face sometimes just going to church and hearing god speak mm. you know would be like and we'd come and be like that word was just for us 
they'd be like, oh man, God, you're good. You know, I remember there were moments where we wanted to give up and, you know, throw in the towel and be like, maybe we didn't hear correctly, mm. you know, and then by going to church, God would just say something mm. through somebody at the pulpit and we would be like, okay. It gives, you that nudge. it gives us that nudge and yeah. that, that 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 extra boost as well would you know keep going and also reading the word of god as well and staying in prayer really really has been such a huge <sighs> there's no greater boost man you know um like the word of god you know one of our favorite scriptures which has really um helped us you know through the moments where you felt like yeah bona imagine this is as low as it goes is mm. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 mm. which says do not grow weary in doing good mm. for in due season you will sure. reap a harvest if you don't give up so that for us has been our go-to scripture you know at our lowest and at our worst we'd go back with, do not grow weary in doing good for in due season you, will reap, a, you will reap a harvest don't if give. you don't give up so we can't give up we have to keep going you know and also being cognizant of the fact to Wuti, we didn't have a problem in our relationship, my husband and I. The mm. problem, the issue that we had was financial. Mm. So we attacked. It wasn't between, it wasn't between us. Ah. Our relationship was solid. We're good, me and I. Mm. So there's no reason for him and I to look at each other and point fingers, Wuti. Where not say sense, Wuti. You said this, but we decided together. Mm. So because we decided together, this is us. This is ours. Mm. And the issue we have is a financial issue. So we, we looked at the issue that way, which the problem is there. It's, it's, not, not, us. it's not us. It's not us. The problem is there. So let's look at that. How do we deal with that? How do we work through that? Let's hold hands and work together to make sure we'll see, we fix that. Mm. You know? And that has been, yeah, that has helped us a lot. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, there was a bump of the marriage council. <laughs> so, sometimes they're not more limited to me. Literally, she didn't even prepare for this. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank uh, you. I do know that you're in Durban for a limited time. Thank you so much for coming through uh, and you. indulging us. We, we often would love to celebrate you for your milestones. I'm, I'm seeing somewhere in the future that there will come a time where you are probably lesser in Durban, lesser in South Africa because <laughs> of the move and things that God is doing in your yeah. life. I know there's a hallelujah challenge coming up. You're yeah. going to be in Nigeria, you're going to be all over the place. And we really, really are proud of you. Uh, we feel like we grew up with, with you, watching <laughs> you from first a little bit. Because you were just a, you were just a, tiny, a baby. Just a tiny kid. And, oh, God, young, and it was like, no, oh, this is cute. This is nice. This is spirit filled, though. And we literally walked with you. And I think. God has, has allowed us that time to walk with you and I think uh, you're, you're now flying and the rest of the world needs to see you Amen. Uh, and we definitely are proud of you Amen. I am, we are Thank definitely proud you. of you we really, we really are uh, yeah I'll just, I'll just stop it there Aww. I'll stop it there, I don't want anyone to stop including <laughs> me thank you so much uh, where do we search, find and follow you and where do we watch the video if someone someone under somewhere here is sitting under a rock and have your videos <laughs> death by singing <laughs> and sitting under a rock <laughs> um, but I'm definitely on all socials I'm on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook recently joined um, TikTok. Yay! I'm um, still <laughs> trying to figure it out. Um, I'm, I'm literally, I'm walking like this over TikTok. <laughs> I'm Look, I, I stayed there for like a year <laughs> without posting a thing. <laughs> but I'm definitely also on TikTok. So if you big as your dogs on Bambo, um, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, well, it's called X, X now. now eh? Gosh, why? Know. But anyway, <laughs> um, look for the verified one and you'll find me on uh, TikTok. It's in doors or underscore Bambo. And that's me. And um, if you haven't watched the Magabongwe video, it's available on our YouTube channel, which is Coco Records. YouTube ch channel is called Magabongwe, the sound of revival. And you will be blessed. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. <laughs>